So we're back in the dairy bush uh, with Martin Newman, who is the manager of forestry at, for the city of Guelph. And we actually also play hockey together, and often on the opposite side. So we're going to be maintain a collegial, non-hockey based uh, relationship here. Sure we will. Yeah, sure. <laughs> or you'll see that we don't. <laughs> Watch the outtakes later on. So, but we've got, um, Martin's made time to come out and talk today and answer some questions about, in general, the role that urban forests play in cities, and then in, in particular, I suppose, the op we've got an opportunity to ask questions about how these forests, these city, um, how the city and the university interact with uh, preserving and maintaining or, or making decisions, development decisions, about natural areas like the woodlots that are on the Gulf campus. So I guess one of the first questions that I've been starting with is, uh, where did you come from to get this job? Because you're probably, even as first year students, already interested in what jobs do you get with this kind of degree? All right, um, I, was, I would say I was trained in conventional forestry. Uh, spent three decades working for the Grand River Conservation Authority in what I call watershed or uh, ecological forestry. Uh, and then uh, had always had uh, an involvement in the city of Guelph through Trees for Guelph. And I'm a Guelph boy, so had my eye on this job when it came up and, and was lucky enough to get it. Uh, but I've always always kept a close uh, relationship with uh, urban forestry. It wasn't brand new to me. Um, so uh, my background uh, is a diploma in forestry from Sir Sanford Farming College and um, an environmental uh, studies uh, degree from Waterloo. Okay. Cool. What? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so then another question, I suppose, is about, we, we've been talking about urban forests, urban woodlots, using them as synonyms, but I mean, but we haven't talked to anybody yet really about what kind of positives or what benefits there are to an urban environment of having, of the forests that are there. Can you, yeah, some big picture? Uh, so, uh, sort of looking back on my career, I. I think I've come to the most important forest uh, more lately. The reason I say that is because 80% of us live in urban areas. Um, so the urban forest is the forest that 80% of us uh, experience day in and day out. Uh, so of course we need the other forests that are more distant as well, but these are the forests that we live in. Uh, so they are Forest-wise, they're our home. Yeah. They're a natural habitat. Yeah. Uh, I like that. So, uh, on a more uh, technical level, uh, urban forests are now being uh, perceived more and more as part of the infrastructure. That's a that's an evolution that continues. Um, Fifteen years ago, nobody used the term green infrastructure around here. Now it's quite common to hear councillors and uh, uh, citizens, stakeholders using the term. Uh, and what it means is that uh, the grey infrastructure, which is uh, the pipes and, and the wires and the pavement, uh, of course that's important, uh, but the green infrastructure, the, the trees, the stormwater management ponds, uh, they all contribute. Uh, and actually the, the urban forest is probably the only infrastructure that gets more valuable over age. That's good. I like that. I so, guess. Yeah, we hope. <laughs> so, I, in your role in the city, I suppose you're, you're talking about in, interacting with um, with both councillors uh, and learning that, that councillors learning to see a green resource, and also local and citizens as well. So, what what? How many different groups within the city would you tend to see on any particular day with any particular issue or question? Oh, uh, with the understanding that there's no average day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I'll answer that a little bit indirectly by, by saying um, in, uh, in the fall of 2012, uh, the City Council adopted an urban forest management plan for the city. Brand new, never happened before. Uh, that 
document, that plan, sets out uh, the need for additional staffing. Uh, my position is part of that series of recommendations and there are some others. Um, and um, that, that plan uh, is to be implemented over 20 years and renewed, hopefully, uh, but with, with a lot of input from stakeholders. So we have an Urban Forest Advisory Committee, uh, and here's where I'm, I segue from your question, of what kind of involvement do we have with the community, and, and this is a more formal mechanism of, of that interaction. That external stakeholders group includes groups like Trees for Guelph, Guelph Urban Forest Friends, um, Nature Guelph, uh, Guelph Hiking Trail Club, uh, two profs from the U of G, not Waterloo. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chamber of Commerce, and then and Sierra Club, I'm forgetting a couple, but uh, EAB Guelph. There's a group that's uh, just promoting EAB awareness. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a chance to interact with those folks and, and create collaborations. And uh, One that I didn't mention is the Arboretum. Uh, and we're just now, uh, just in the last couple of weeks, uh, we've had some dialogue about uh, new uh, collaborations with the Arboretum uh, around their expertise, around making unusual uh, street trees available through their little nursery and that kind of thing. So I'm quite excited about that. On an average day, uh, I don't take a lot of calls uh, from councillors. Uh, usually, usually when there's a councillor involved, it's because uh, somebody's not satisfied with the service they've been getting and they've gone, uh, they, yeah. they've gone the political route hoping to get uh, better satisfaction. Um, so the, my interaction uh, with folks on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis tends to be around uh, why aren't the branches picked up after the ice storm, uh, copy the mayor and council. <laughs> so, so, uh, so that's fun. Um, but uh, it's early days in this uh, urban forest management plan. Uh, I started in uh, this past November. Uh, we've hired two urban forest technologists uh, in April. Uh, we're, uh, we have another one in the budget. We'll see if it gets approved for 2015. Uh, so it, it's this staffing up that's going to give us the capacity to interact more than just uh, when are you going to pick up the branches now. Okay, cool. So one of the things that we've been talking about throughout the term, and, or will continue to talk about throughout the term in this narrative is, is the inevitable plans uh, for development that the university has and how those, we haven't had a chance yet to talk about, I, th I guess, how those interact with the city's development plans. And so we've talked about, and people, students have explored the Dairy Bush and the Browns Woods and the North Campus Ravine and the Arboretum. And we know, and we've talked to the PR representative about the Campus Master Plan. And so how the proposal to make the, we're in the Dairy Bush, so just facing north of the field that's here at the intersection of Gordon and uh, or Edinburgh and College into a mixed-use development zone. And so one of the questions that I had for you is, I suppose, how, how I suppose in broad strokes, how would that would then happen? Because in the master plan, it talks about uh, like a 10-meter development would be prevented within 10 meters of the drip line of the edge of the forest, which is which is really close, I, as, as I think we've seen in Google Earth, and hopefully when you guys come out, you can walk and pace 10 steps away, which is roughly 10 meters, and then wonder about maybe where the root system is of the trees that you're just standing beside. So I guess it's an opportunity to talk about some of those questions. Yeah, so, uh, so the development process, uh, I would say, is a form of formalized negotiations. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, the broader context uh, includes Guelph being part of the designated uh, areas for growth, eventually. Uh, so the city of Guelph has uh, targets that they are mandated to reach by the province. Uh, so um, and you're, you're always looking at, at uh, 
the balance between squeezing more people in and uh, and how you can how you can prevent that squeezing in of more development uh, from uh, negatively impacting uh, or let's say negatively impacting in a in unacceptable way uh, the natural features that exist or the natural processes that, that you want to maintain and uh, it's not easy to yeah. okay. look <laughs> um, So as uh, I hope your view, you agree. <laughs> uh, the, the, under the Planning Act uh, the developer would, would put in a proposal for, for what they would Before they do that, they study the official plans and hopefully make sure they're consistent with what the official plan and the provincial policies uh, obligate them to do.